Today on this special edition of the Let's Talk Battle Rap Podcast, our 100th episode, we made it, here we are, the big one zero zero. we're officially in three digit land, and you know, I'm humbled to have made it this far, uh, we're here to stay, that's definitely one thing I, I want to point out, and it's just been an amazing journey. Uh, I want to give all you guys a heads up right now. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, I kind of just want to acknowledge the growth of the show. Uh, all of the people that run the show, all of my partners, my podcast team, and everybody that's contributed to the show, supported it. So I might go on a little soliloquy. If you want to jump into the actual movie review, you can start the episode at about the 11 minute mark or so. But, you know, I, I want to give my contributions and my affirmations to everybody that, uh, has helped this platform, have supported it, has been a part of it. It's The growth has been amazing. Uh, just a year ago, you know, 2017, around this time, October, November, I had the idea of just starting a show or, you know, finally getting into Battle Rap Media because I had just been following the culture for over 10 plus years and I was so well uh, versed in so many areas of the culture and I just wanted to explore it and learn about it. I almost created the show for myself just to kind of just get the background and insight to things, really. And um, I had a mentor. His name is Jeffrey. Shout out to him, man. He helped pretty much start up the show for me, created the, the art design for the show, the cover, you know, taught me about uh, audio and how to really get, you know, your your content on iTunes and the RSS feed and a whole bunch of stuff, man. But he really helped me execute this idea and this vision I had. And as time progressed, you know, me and Program V linked up, and uh, he was just a fan of the show, just a supporter of the show. And I just told him, come to the studio. The vibe and the energy was great, and I just told him, like, hey, I need a co-host. I, you know, I'll, my show for the first uh, four or five months, it was just a show by myself. And I knew if it was just going to be by myself running the show, it was going to be a little more difficult or just more reliant on guests, and I didn't want that. And, you know, me and him hit it off, and it's been amazing since then. And as time progressed, a lot of people that have been uh, as well supported of the show with great energy. Shouts to Bad Money, who, you know, he's, he's on at least 10 episodes. And it just got to the point where it's like, yo, you're already LTBR. Like, you know, it, let's let's make it happen. Let's let's sign this deal. <laughs> and, you know, shouts to Tim the Genius, man. We, we were searching for Tim. Way prior to him getting on the show, we were trying to figure out who he was because I I had just been using his lyrics for so long. I had to credit him and figure out you know his contributions to to this culture. He he's a great addition to our team and and Dylan man, the guy's intelligent man, young cat, is intelligent, well well detailed oriented, and he was on the show for a recap. And we really loved the way he analyzed battles, and we realized yo we need somebody for recaps, and. You know, shouts to the LTBR team, man, Program V, Dylan, Bad Money, t- uh, Tim. Keep it real, man. Without these guys, I really wouldn't know where I'll be with the show. Uh, they're, they're part of, they're not just like a staff. We're like one big team, really. Like, they're the engine, and we move this forward, man. It's just crazy to me. Like, you know, starting the show a year ago, no website, no platform, no YouTube. Um, I made Twitter for the show, so I didn't even have a Twitter prior, and so many artists gave me the opportunity for, uh, you know, interviews, and I took, I took that content, I vaulted it until I figured out how to really build the platform from the ground up, um, and I forget, I had ARP on the show, and he, he told me directly, like, listen, man, if you build this thing the right way, the professional way, stay away from all the drama, and, uh, you know, the, the hurdles of battle rap and the bullshit, you know, it'll take you time, but you'll you'll build the right way and you'll build your brand the right way. And it stuck with me. And we've had so many people on the show from uh, Jay Murder, Money Bags, ARP, Lex Luthor, Fly King Eye, Wes Crave. Shout out to B Dot. B Dot was actually my first interview ever of the show, even though he's episode five. He was my first interview ever. We've had Snake Eyes, Eddie Eye, uh, Street Star Norbs, Red Flag. Loso, Jazz the Rapper, Newborn, O from Street Status, RX, Cortez, Misfit, Mike P, uh, A Ward, G Lo, Pat Stay, Carter Deems, Sharon, JB the Sound Guy. Uh, we're supposed to have Iron Solomon, but it's going to happen. Uh, Gunpowder Pat, SO Finesse, you know, 
uh, it's just been incredible, man. Ace Boogie, and you know, we've had behind the curtain guys. Um, shouts to Battle Rap Stats. Shouts to Ryan O'Leary. I reference Ryan O'Leary pretty pretty frequently in a lot of episodes. He's the author of the very first battle rap book in history. You know, um, try to get the guys from Verse Tracker on it. This is there's a lot of contributors in battle rap. A lot of people behind the scenes that really pertain to this culture, and I, I try to get their voices too. You know, um, big shouts to Debo. Had Debo on the show. You know, um, we did a tribute to official. You know, when she air quote retired, but you know, retiring in battle rap is never real. <laughs> um, e Heart. You know, the Godmother of female battle rap <laughs> legend. Danny Myers, the bar guy, and uh, shout out to Nestle, one of the most underrated guys in battle rap. We've had him on, uh, ARP, Lawrence from RBE. Um, shoot, man, there's just so many people. Yeah, if I forget anybody, you know, please uh, pardon me. I apologize. The, the list just goes on, man. And not just artists, neither. We or people behind the curtains. We also have media platforms on the show too. Shouts to Black Compass. Shout outs to T Seven M Seven Mitchell. Big shout outs to J Legend, The Union, DME, and uh, Visual. Man, those guys are awesome. Honestly, we had J Legend pull up to the studio. Big Al. Uh, he also shows a bunch of love as well, man. Uh, those guys are great. Honestly, I love what those guys do and with their platform as well and how uh, nitty and gritty they get. They have no problem ever getting into a tough debate. Big shout outs to The Source. We've also had writers from The Source on the show. Uh, I love all these media platforms, man. Like they, they fuel battle rap. They help elevate it all. Honestly, shout outs to Caps, Angry Fan. He he hits us with some love as well. He, you know, he, he fucks with the show. Huge shout outs to uh, Street Star Norbs. I know I mentioned we had him on the show, but he definitely seen the vision with us too and believed in us a lot and uh, fucks with us heavy. And, you know, I talked to him a lot on a personal level too. Uh, built a pretty good report with him. He definitely big uh, motivator and influence for a lot of things we do. You know, I, I don't have an ego. The show doesn't have an ego. Like, we. I have absolutely no problem collaborating with other shows or we're tuned into other shows. Like we breathe into the culture, you know, um, shout out to the biggest platform of battle rap media champion, you know, shout out to Jay black, major respects to him because, uh, you know, when I first started the show, I definitely had a goal that I wanted to be on champion, you know, within a year or two, like, yo, like I want my brand to get this big where I could, you know, have a voice. I can be on this platform and speak and have my opinion respected and you know it happened he saw the work we did he respected the craft and the platform and the brand and we, we made it happen and i just tune into everybody man black compass uh shout out to tony bro battle rap resume psa psa hip-hop uh three letter man sarcasm city they, they always keep me updated with the uk scene and definitely battle rap resume shout out to tom Kui. you know that's my guy Shout out to D.I. the Henny Man. Battle rap trap shit. He shows nothing but love every time, you know, uh, he sees us. Um, yeah, man, a lot of these shows, all you guys motivate me, fuel me, uh, put some inspiration into things because uh, I listen to it all. Hip hop, in the loop, champion, uh, 15 minutes of fame. It, it's incredible, man. It's incredible. We've had a battle rap book this year too. <laughs> had an Arthur on my show. Uh, somebody that was covering battle rap for, you know, since Eminem was battling. <laughs> the the trenches that this show has gone into, and all the avenues and stories and and all the mud and pain that has gone into creating this has been, it's been an amazing journey to say the least. And uh, that's why I wanted to bring this this hundredth uh, episode with the body review. Because um, I felt like the movie well represented what this culture stood for, really. The modernized version of what this culture is. Uh, the plot of the movie, a progressive, uh, <clears throat> a progressive graduate student that's just trying to find success. And his interest is sparked in battle rap. And he wanted to make it a decent subject. And before you know it, he becomes a part of this competitive obsession. And, and, and he's in lyrical warfare. And 
the movie just really spoke to the human side of battle rap. It, it spoke to spoke to me and all of the fans of the culture. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, you know, shout out to Joseph Kahn, Eminem, and all of our battle MCs that participated in this movie. It was beautiful. Um, so definitely wanted to give give this his proper review, talk about it, and I really felt it was worth being the hundred episode. So thank you guys always for tuning in to LTBR podcast, man. Uh it's definitely been a humbling experience. I'm humbled and we're just gonna keep going up from here really. And to everybody listening, if you're not aware, if you're a casual fan, you're a hardcore fan, or you haven't studied the game tapes, before listening to the review, if you watch the movie or at least watch the trailers, definitely give a chance to watch Dumbfounded versus Kid Twist. Uh, if you've seen the movie and you haven't seen that battle or you haven't seen it in a long time and you want to re-spark your memory on it, it it'll definitely give you a big uh, refilling, refreshing vibe of like, oh, wow, this is kind of where it all stemmed from and, you know... It just really speaks out to the culture. I hope you guys enjoy this review, man. And uh, as always, LTBR Podcast, Twitter, Instagram. You know where to find us. Like, subscribe, comment, rate, and continue to support the show. Battle rap is a street fight. You got someone right in your face trying to tear you apart. I don't know if I should slap you like a bitch or punch your face like a man. Because I keep switching from open palm to a fist. Like a white boy shaking your hand. Actual G's, you ain't kill none. So shut the fuck up and chill, son. Just cause you look like Kim Jong Un doesn't mean you're ill, son. You have some creative Asian. As you guys already know, this is gonna be a different kind of episode, a more special episode. We got the LTBR team, a little round table episode. Uh, Three fifths of the teams available. We got. Our coach, Bad Money, our playbook analyst, the guy who makes all his picks for these battles, and he's above 500 right now. And we got our recap expert who can diligently break down all battles. But right now, we're not going to necessarily break down and talk about battles. We're going to do a little something a little different. We're going to do a movie review. This is our first movie review podcast, guys. I'm kind of hype. Might wind up doing more of these in the future. Never know. Hey, I hope so. Yeah, man. Um... I got the plugs out the way, man. LTBR Podcast, Twitter, Instagram, LTBR Podcast, Gmail, Let's Talk Battle Rap at gmail.com. And guys, we're here reviewing the movie Bodied. Um, dropped, came out November 2nd in uh, all the movie theaters. Well, I won't say all the movie theaters because it was in very selective markets New York City, Dallas. Uh, was it even showing in Philly? Bad Money? Yeah, it was showing here. Okay, Philly. We got some AMC movie theaters. Yeah, Houston. That's what's up, man. How else did I see it? <laughs> yeah, shout outs to uh to Tim, man. He's all the way, I think, what, what Milwaukee? He, he ain't going to see that movie anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait. No, no, it should be about to hit YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But, yo, um, I don't know about you guys. I felt very well represented as somebody in the battle rap culture by this movie, like a lot of the stuff was really accurate. Like, of course there's little things that you like will nitpick, but honestly, overall, I, I love the movie, to be honest. The movie had like a, a good feel to it. You know what I mean? Like as far as like battle rap culture, you got to go into it, not necessarily expecting smack, like from the rip, as far as like looking at the characters, you can't go in and expect smack, you know, like when you're watching the trailer and stuff like that. So I had an open mind and did not necessarily expect the gritty, gritty street side of battle rap that we become accustomed to um, more prominently today. Um, and I kind of thought of like KOTD, uh, Grime Time era ish battle rap. You know, I had to take myself to that mind state, you know, before I even, you know, stepped in the theater. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I agree with that. And I think just seeing battle rappers that, you know, you're able to relate with and people you've seen, you know, on the screen for years, actually be a part of a movie and do well. It was, uh, you know, like like Fran said, it's you felt well represented, especially as a battle rap fan. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I actually like when I watched the movie. I couldn't help but like make little notes as I was actually watching it. Cause I'm like, yo, I gotta reference this and talk about it because 
a lot of moments of the of the movie showed a lot of the human side of battle rap that we don't like to always cross or line because it's just, it's just too personal, right? Like, we don't ever get into the MC's lives, figure out where they're working, what's their life like, who, if they have kids. But a lot of little moments of the of the movie just, like, show the, the preparation process of around how real it is, wh- why they have to do this for money. Like, you know, sometimes you got to go to war with somebody you don't want to go to war with. Right. Um, I want to, like, this is what I'll do, right? I made a lot of little moments of the movie. Again, I guess whoever's watching it and hasn't watched it, would this be a spoiler? I guess <laughs> I, I wouldn't. The movie's out, so I can't, guess we can't call it a spoiler. But I'm going to talk about a lot of things. If you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want to uh, have anything here, I guess ruined for you, you can pause so, it. Yeah, you can pause it now. Alert! Uh, don't pause. Stop. Turn off. Go to another episode of the podcast if mm. you've not seen this movie. But this particular episodes for people who have seen the movie. And if you haven't seen the movie and you're a fan of battle rap, what are you doing? Get to your local theater and go support the culture. Big facts. Let me point out this. I mean, let me just throw all the things I I, I saw topics. I want to get you guys initial reaction. Um, the beginning scene when, uh, they're like, Oh man, this, this, this venue's packed out with girls and they, they turn the camera angle. There's only two girls in the venue. <laughs> It was accurate. <laughs> it was accurate, bro. Most of the girls you see at a battle rap um, concert, <laughs> you're going to see like a girl that probably came with a battle rapper. Yeah. A lot of the times. But I mean, you'd be surprised, though. I said some of Man is Six, there was a lot of girls there. Uh, I mean, no, mate, there was a lot of girls there, too. Hey, so. I, in Atlanta, when I went to Atlanta, there was a lot. That was the most girls I've ever seen in the battle event ever. I think I think we're doing a little better, man. I think we're doing a little better. I think we could do more than two girls a night. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> we got to holler at Verb about that. Verb said that, you know, there would be a minimum of 20 women per battle rap event when he is king and he is, you know, dethroned Luke. <laughs> Therefore, things he's gotta, have to deliver. Verb. He's got to deliver. We got to keep tallies on it. Make sure he's doing his job. When you guys saw the scene, right, early in the beginning when Disaster was rapping towards Daylight and he punched Daylight, did you guys just think to yourself, like, wow, this is so symbolic of, like, when Disaster fought math? Uh, I didn't like it necessarily uh, represent Disaster, I'll say, because Disaster's already been in one of those type of situations. And I was like, damn it, why couldn't they have somebody else do that other than Disaster? Because then it kind of, like, you know, sheds light on, you know, disaster and math fight, you know, and that brings, you know, feelings and tension back into the air that, you know, hopefully they're squashed, you know, move past it, but it just was like, oh. No, yeah, but I mean, is. I guess this movie was trying to, they were trying to be real and they were trying to be raw with it, so yeah. they, they exposed all sides of battle rap, and that is unfortunately one side that, you know, was a part of the culture and something that was talked about a lot. Uh, I mean, I kind of agree having Diz do it, but he was in the movie doing what Diz does. I mean, he was himself for a lot of this movie. I feel like it was probably not that hard for him to get into character. Uh, okay. So <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, he just he, he did himself and it shed a negative light, but it also shed a lot of positive lights and it was just real and honest. I, right. Although it does show a lot of negative lights, um, it gets a lot of coverage. And I know we don't want that coverage. Would it be weird to say, like, some coverage is better than no coverage in battle rap? No, all publicity is better than no publicity. But you know what? Disaster punching daylight um, probably was symbolic of the fact that this art form, like, you say the most brutal stuff to you know each other or whatnot, and it can lead to this. And it gets so intense up there, and y'all saying the most wildest, craziest shit that you could possibly say to somebody in life that you can't get away with off of this stage if these guys weren't being artistic that you damn near want to see them come to blows but you really want to see them continue to battle you know so it was symbolic of the fact that it can go there and that the feeling is there for it to go there but it shouldn't go there you know so i think more so if anything that scene was symbolic of that yeah, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, that that's a moment that's just like since we've we've seen it already, we've seen it happen. You just look at it and you just like, wow, like this brought me back to that fight, and I remember how serious that situation was. But it, hey, I, and uh, maybe they got disaster to do it, so you can identify with, hey, oh, that's the guy. Okay, so now he's in the movie doing okay. 
Yeah, I think this is a great movie to take a casual battle rap fan to, or somebody that really exactly. doesn't know what battle rap is. Like even the beginning of the movie with the main character, he's his wife is like his girlfriend. Like, oh, this is battle rap. And you have you guys tried to show battle rap to somebody that doesn't know it, and you have to you're there explaining bars, you're explaining stuff, you you have to explain what a name flip is. And I love that when he was explaining a name flip, she's like, why does he keep saying X? And he's like, well, his name is X, so he's taking his name around and doing a whole bunch of stuff. He could, and I'm like, oh, this is this is exactly. Exactly what it's like when I'm sitting down with somebody right. trying to teach them this. <laughs> it's so relatable. Yeah, right. so kind of the frustration, the frustrations of being a battle rap fan and trying to get somebody to, you know, understand everything that you you go crazy for. Like I don't really, no, that, that, that's kind of weird. Why did why did he win? Like I don't know. I, a lot of people I talk to are more just casual like hip hop fans, so mm-hmm. they don't they can appreciate like haymakers, but schemes and overheads they miss a lot so that that just definitely brings back the feel of trying to get uh you know just an average fan into battle rap right um i was really blown away too i was a lot of scenes like i was just blown away by um i really like the scene where adam kind of battled sharon outside and um i liked it because he was just throwing out like little lines that he he thinks about when he's obviously binge watching battle rap and I'm sure all of us playing around, like, we'll say a line playing around. Like, uh, us on the Slack one day, I had a line about bad money, and it was fire. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. He plugged himself. I don't play around. I really does this. You know what I'm saying? I've really <laughs> done this before. You know what I mean? I'm not that anymore right. or whatnot. But I've really done this before, man. I've been out here in the trenches. I know what I'm talking about when I speak yeah, on yeah, you do. battle and this is a warning preparation friends. and stuff like that. So I understand what goes into um, a writer's preparation and the going into a battle. You Facts. know what I mean? Like, I've really, really done this before. So but, it was like, yeah. it was dope, you know, see how they broke it down in a movie, you know, um, the whole explaining to somebody thing. You know what I mean? Because I had to do that. My sister, she's become more than like a casual battle rap fan. Like, I watch every pay-per-view with her and my brother, you know, so... I still have to explain stuff to her. And this has been like for the past two years, I've watched every pay-per-view with her and my brother, but I still have to explain stuff to her. So when you bring in new people in the battle rap, it's just, it's dope. What what hit me though, is that like he was spitting out lines that he's created just like in his head from watching battle rap. Right. And just think, think, think about it for a second, how oversaturated the battle rap market has become from people that probably, Digested battle rap via YouTube. Like we have MCs in battle rap, and we have no offense, we have YouTube battle rappers, people that learn how to rap off YouTube, and that's what Adam was. Adam's a person that learned how to rap off of YouTube, and that's like, yo, that's so real because you'll find battle MCs now that just don't really understand rap cadence, but understand punchlines, understand round structure. Thanks. You know, but, yeah, I, mean, I mean, Sharon was hilarious, you know, in that moment, his part. I love Him it. And how would her pants? He's looking crazy. <laughs> but it was hilarious. I mean, it didn't showcase necessarily Sharon's lyrical ability in that moment in a movie. But, I mean, it, it was his character fully. Like, it was Sharon. But just as far as the raps, like, it wasn't Sharon-ish. I right. Say. <laughs> What are your thoughts on that, Dylan? Like, we have so many YouTube error battlers now. I mean, I think it's it's important. Ooh, my mouth fell off. It's, I mean, it's important to to notice the difference because you can see it in the way that you know performances and you know a lot of the older the older style battlers that came in before the YouTube era or at the beginning of it, they they cater to the crowd differently and they have a different they have a different way about them. They're not even if they're not as pen heavy or whatever, uh, they the attributes they bring just you can see the evolution of battle rappers now versus then. And it's not like it's a bad thing. It's not like there's you know a negative a negative that really comes with that. I can't really think of one other than giving people more game tape. I mean everything evolves after time, but it's a uh, it's interesting that they put that perspective in because I feel like a lot of people overlook that, and a lot of people that are battle rap fans have been here for a while, so I think they don't really take that into consideration as much. So that was a nice little, you know, shed of light moment. Yeah, I agree, man. And um, I love the fact that, like, at that moment, it kind of brought back to reality, right? Like, you're in the event. You got to feel the realness of an event. Like, everything about it looked like an actual, like, small league battle event. 
then you get back to the reality where Adam is like being criticized by his girlfriend, his father, people in his school, friends and family and all this stuff. And when they're at the dinner table having that conversation, I know we're going to get a little political, politically correct here, unfortunately, but that's also I liked a lot about the, the show because I feel like I mean, the movie, because I feel like it showed that uh, Battle Rap has difficulty breaking through the mainstream or getting to the masses because of its content and people don't realize that this is just a performing art this is just aggressive poetry and and dylan i'm not gonna lie man i would love to hear from your perspective like what well, how did you feel like here in that moment where it's like okay adam's like family and people around him didn't accept battle rap because he's white and people in the culture is like well you're here and you're not supposed to be here like what you know why why do we have that gap um, I mean, I think there's always kind of been that gap in hip hop. Um, it was never, you know, our culture to start with. And uh, a lot of people in the beginning profited off of it that were white and took advantage of the artists that were not white. And I think that just just being able to, to shed light on such an important issue in in hip hop, because there's a lot of uh, appropriating culture and taking advantage of of a a family of a belonging that's not yours and just coming in and trying to ruin it like uh i mean i think this even they ties into like drop the mic um they do basically battle raps with celebrities and they give no acknowledgement to actual battle rap mm. um and battle rap was help you know right behind the scenes for this show mm. exactly like battle raps and nothing. They have no. They get no kind of support. No kind of publicity. I've seen nothing about it. I've never watched that show. I refuse to watch that show. Um, but just you know the way that I mean, and even going to like when he was talking to uh, the the wife at the table, and she was like, like Mr. Cultural Appropriator, what do you do besides that? Like, <laughs> and he kind of sat there and she was like, but she just bodied you. Like, and it's, it's, you know, it feels like that sometimes, but I feel like if you do things the right way and I think Adam kind of, he was never really, he clearly showed that he wasn't trying to overstep or take advantage of anything. He was just there to be there. Um, and I think a lot of people respected that because he was himself. He didn't try to be anything too, too crazy. And I think that's the most important thing about it is just being yourself and enjoying the art for what it is. And, uh, you know, just it shows the struggles of, of honestly, you know, there's not many, but one of the struggles of being white in hip hop and trying to to prove that you're not here to take advantage and that you're just here to enjoy it and be a fan as well. And I think that uh, no, it was pretty cool and they did a good job of showing that and he did a good job of kind of, you know, playing that role and counteracting it. Although sometimes he was a little too white for me, but uh, <laughs> no, overall he did a good job of uh, the the movie. Joseph Kahn did a great job of directing that and putting that aspect in there. Yes, yeah, amazing job, um, Joseph Kahn. And I want to piggyback on um, two things that Dylan said. Yeah. Um, I think more so at this stage of the game, hip hop has become like a universal culture. I mean, it started at you know where it started. We don't have to go into to the origins of you know wherever hip hop started at. We know where it started at. You understand what I'm saying? There have been white artists that have come through and um you know broke through and you know have not appropriated the culture. You know with you know the things that then we got Beastie Boys, Third Base, Eminem. Like the list goes on and on. You know a white artist that came into the culture. You know and respected the culture. And the thing about hip hop and this all ties in. They dropped the mic. And um, how pretty much the battle rap culture looks at Drop the Mic is more so like it's not respectful to the art form of battle rap. Guys like the Beastie Boys, Third Base, Eminem, these guys came into the rap game and they respect the culture, which, you know, in turn, the culture accepted them. You understand what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. shows like like Drop, Drop the Mic, you know, don't necessarily get the push from the culture because we feel like it's a mockery of it. And with this particular movie, everybody was concerned about how it was going to look, you know, and it was just outrage in the Twitterverse and it is in a battle rap community or whatnot, uh, how this movie was going to come out, not necessarily amongst the battle rappers, but amongst the fans and people who are not in the know with the movie, more so like how's battle rap going to be represented. And before it could even come out, people are looking at the trailer and they're like, oh, this looks like this. 
oh, it looks like it's just going to make fun of Battle Rap, this, that, and the third. And when you watch the movie, Battle Rap got respected. And that's why, like, you know, I had the privilege of seeing the movie a little bit earlier than some people, and I still went out and supported it because I want to support the culture and put money back into the culture. Um, but what I'm trying to say is uh, the break, break, just to break everything down in a nutshell, um, as long as, you know, everybody respects the culture, you know, regardless of race, color, creed, you know what I mean? That's all hip hop has all been about, you know, from the beginning, just respecting the culture. And this movie set out to do so um, you know, respecting the culture of battle rap, because maybe you know, and they got the feedback from the battle rappers. You know, like how they want to be represented. Excuse yeah, me if I yeah, start man. Uh, I love what both of you guys said. Uh, I I don't I really have no. I don't know if I started rambling towards the end. No, nah, I, re- I really have nothing. Find a way to wrap it up. I have no, I have no way to, <laughs> nothing to add to it because it was just well said, and I I think it's just something that like. It was well painted for us to realize, like, wow, you know, we do have these struggles. Like, people that don't understand it, they're watching these things, and they're just so confused. But you know, I, I'm that's why I said from the beginning, I felt very well represented with uh, the movie, and it had its serious moments, and I, but it balanced it out with like its reality of battle rap. And if you see, every time it had its real serious moments, like whenever. Adam was around his like family, his, his you know his peers, and they discrediting you know rap or battle rap. He would then go to the battle rap world, and as if it's as if no, none of that existed. Reminds right. me, reminds same, me, reminds same me, thing with Ben. It's almost like a, it's a parallel universe. R- reminded me of a uh, Ben, um, not Ben, um, Swave Sever against B Dot when Swave was like, "We come here to escape that shit." <laughs> <laughs> Facts. You, you know what I mean? And go, go ahead, though, my fault. Oh, no, I was just, I was going to, you can go ahead if you're going to piggyback on that. I was going to bring out, like, to, I want to bring some, some dumbfounded, you know, we got to talk about his genius yeah, in that movie. Yeah. He I, did I was, great. I was just about, I was just about to transition into that. So, um, you know, he gets his PG call, I guess, right? It's air quote PG call. Yeah, right? Air quote. <laughs> <laughs> air quote PG, GZ, grind time, <laughs> grind time tryout, WRC tryout, whatever you want to call it. Whatever it was at the time period, but he gets the call, and I loved it because I'm like, yo, I wonder if this is what the call really looks like for when a lot of these guys get this call. Like, you know, we do the PG mock drafts, and we follow <laughs> so many of these guys coming up. I wonder if like a Chef Trez gets the call in his early career, like, yes, I'm about to battle on Smack, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's just funny, and he gets his PG call, and he gets to battle dumbfounded, right? Um. I love the scenes where he's showing the writing process. Like, he's washing dishes, thinking of bars, runs to his laptop. He's doing something, thinking of bars, runs to his laptop. I'm like, yo, this is what it really be like for the rappers. Like, they're just doing something and they cut their entire life off because they can't lose the line they just created. Yeah, I mean, that process seems pretty, I mean, it seems pretty tedious, but, uh, I mean, I, I gotta imagine that you know the battle rappers on set were like, "Yeah, this is this is perfect," because I just be walking around doing this, and oh shit, that was fire! I gotta go, I gotta write this down, I gotta pull my phone out or something. So I can only imagine that that's exactly how it was, because you know you have eight, ten battle rappers plus on set. You know, I'm sure they, that that was something that they all talked about and helped with. What you Definitely, think of the, I mean, what you think of the they, process, they, Bad Money? I think. Um, they pretty much did a good job of helping the main character like appear to the audience that he was taking the craft serious. You know, like how to how what type of faces you make like when you're trying to think of a line. And then when you think of that hard line, like the excitement that you feel, you know, when you're trying to piece the line together and then you finally find that word that, you know, you've been trying to rhyme with. It's like, oh shit, I got it. I gotta hurry up and write it down before I forget it. You know, that's why he's running up and um, down the stairs to his laptop and stuff like that. You know why he's watching dishes. So it, they did a good job, you know, helping him develop his character and, you know, not come across as cheesy and more so come across as authentic, you know, in my eyes. His battle with Dumbfounder was so good, right? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. I thought it was a, they did a good job of starting it off. Like, he, with his, like, dumb, first of all, Dumbfounder was great in his throughout this whole movie um like even when you know after the battle when they were in the the spot they caught him when he was cooking and uh 
they were talking about the old man did like the spinning back kick. That shit was that shit was hilarious. Uh, I'm not gonna you know spoiler alert. We already gave that away, but uh, no, the battle the battle was crazy. I thought uh, the writing was cool and it had a lot of dumbfounded feel. Like yeah, it sounded just like a dumbfounded round. Like we don't get a lot of those because he's very conservative of a battle rapper. So it's really refreshing to see him come back in battle. And it's like, wow, this is nostalgic. This is a good feeling. Like, I love it. A, this is why I enjoy watching you as a battler. And um, I, what I really liked is when Adam, like, while he's there listening to the round, and uh, he's, like, spitting his material, and the crowd's not reacting, like, something in his mind switches. <laughs> he goes, yeah. okay, I'm going to go into my other bag. Yeah, he did, like, one, he did, like, one joke that was Asian, and they all cracked up, and he, like, Clicked into the offensive racist jokes. <laughs> in my head, I'm like, yo, do yo, bad money. You was a rapper. Do do. Do you guys have like a, a extra bag where you're like you're rapping and it's like, oh shit, they're not feeling this. I gotta switch. Whoop, go into this other verse. <laughs> yeah, you have like the turn up bag. Like your opponent's rapping, and you know, you know, like they get natural, and the and the people are starting to react. You be like, you know, and I was gonna rap this verse, but nope, I'm gonna rap this verse, or I'm gonna cut this verse off here, and I'm gonna jump in. With you know this sixteen bars or this twelve bars or these eight bars, and I'm gonna crush them, and then I'm gonna jump back into this. You know, sometimes that's just how it is. Like when you in the heat of the moment and you staring somebody eye to eye, and you just having that competitive, you know, word uh, war between y'all. You know what I mean? Like it goes down. Like you got to think fast. You got to move fast. You know, in these situations, because yeah. the slightest slip up can cost you. You know, within a battle, so. And he re- and he rebuttaled, which which uh he got to, they got to show you the rebuttaling process where like everything stopped for a minute. It was in slow motion, and like he looked into like dumbfounded his face and was able to cancel out all the noise and can only hear his voice. So I'm thinking to myself, yo, and that's a small ass venue. Imagine these mm-hmm. venues where like you know guys packed a thousand, two thousand people. How the hell do you tune out the crowd to digest the line in your head and say it and execute? Fuck! It made me it made me appreciate rebuttaling so much more. Yeah, I mean, just the listening to your opponent, you know, um, round or whatnot. Um, pretty much, I think that ties into something that um, happened this weekend at a battle. Like when your opponent's rapping and you still going over your rounds. I'm we're getting into that off the call. You know, I think that kind of messed somebody up this weekend. Mm. Right. Um, what else, man? What else did I want? I wanted to talk about? Can we talk about the Lush one, the Donnie Narco? I love him. How did you forget? <laughs> hey, that was that was accurate. Yo, when he said the he said a line, I think when he was on the phone with uh, Adam, he goes, uh, "Let's shoot this bitch, no Selena." I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "That's a fucking bar." <laughs> it's crazy. It's just like they had Lush in the movie. It's like, why would you just get Lush to play Lush, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Why would you just not get Lush One to play Lush One? You know what I mean? But maybe they just already had like the person that right. they were gonna have, you know, um be the Lush One character, and maybe they bought Lush One on set to, to help, help him, him be that the yeah. character and tell him like, no, say this. This is the type of shit I say. You know, so say <laughs> something like this. Because I'm pretty sure there was like a lot of improv right there on the set. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Then, um, so Ben got to take Adam to his PG, and Ben was also the main event of the card, right? So Ben was the main event. That's, that probably happens all the time. Somebody's main event, and like, yo, put my little homie on the undercard. I got you, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's so, Rex used to do it all the time, right? And then, uh, Ben battles Pat Stay, who is a racist in the movie. Uh, yeah, I mean, and he's like. I'm just doing what y'all do. And they're like, whoa. Like, and then, like, I mean, when he ran into Lux and Hollow at the end there, like, Lux was like, man, I like you. You're being real. Like, <laughs> no, the thing is, like, you know, they uh, they came at Pat for it. And in past, they said, yo, what I'm doing is no different than what you're doing. You guys are coming out of Asian. You guys are coming at me for being white. You're saying this and that. And then Lux is like, well, you got a point. Like, this is an open forum. Like, if we're going to throw those shots, we got to kind of take it back. And um, yeah. Lux and Hollow were an interesting dynamic. Like, they were definitely not what I expected, you know? No, Lux and Hollow were hilarious. No, no, movie. it was like, good. It's just like, if I didn't envision it, you know? Right. You didn't, 
you didn't think they could their chemistry would bounce off each other so well right. like it did in that movie like they seem like they naturally like hang out together like I want to see something like with Lux and Hollow, like, and, and like, you know what I mean? Something on the screen, you know what I mean? Where they, and in another movie together, that would be dope. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought that they, you know, when I saw them on the cover, I was like, oh, this is going to be dope. They're going to, you know, battle somebody, whatever. I didn't think they were going to be on a team. That was, I don't know, kind of a shock more than anything, but yeah, they did really well. And that two on two battle was crazy. Yeah, and man. that's the spill the beans pretty much on everything that was going to happen in the movie like two years ago when they were talking about it. Like when they first first started shooting the movie, disaster spilled the beans on everything that was happening. You know, I forgot what radio show was on. I think it was on uh, PSA. Shout out to three. Um, I I want to say it was on PSA, but I'm not all the way sure. But it was on somebody. It was on PSA or Angry Fan, or whatever. So I right. anticipated the two on two. I'm like, what? Like, they did two on two? Wow. You know what I mean? So it's dope. Yeah, it's just it's just amazing. And uh the whole undercard of that event, right, where Ben and Pat stay battle, you also had like Roan battling. He was battling Divine Nine, the female of the movie, the female battle rapper of the movie. And uh, <laughs> I love that Roan was just himself. Like he came in with a suit and was just like quirky <laughs> and hilarious. I'm like, nah, this is Roan. No, 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 no. Roan was Carter Dean. The whole battle reminded me of Carter Dean for his body. <laughs> It was wild, man. I mean, conceited. Uh, also, was there battling in, in the on the card? <laughs> that, that was funny. I like seeing conceited be whack. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like there was two people that like just I didn't like their material, but I I love seeing them. But I just didn't like their material of the movie. Was conceited and Big T. I was like, come on, man, you guys can give me something better than this. I can, yeah. At that point, I was like, man, they couldn't have wrote this. Like somebody somebody told them to say this, but they got paid, so I don't care. <laughs> Um, they also show that guy that was choking the choke artist that I forgot. I even forgot his name because it, it's just oh uh, he 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 kind of was rapping like Nems. He, he learned a little big stocky. Oh dude. yeah, the guy. But, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. He was kind of rapping like Nems, big stocky dude, and then he was just choking. And I love the fact that like you know afterwards they was like just like cutting his ass. They were slandering him, just choking on him. They're like, yo, uh, you, where you park your car? Oh, I forgot. Would you do this? I forgot. And it's like, man, can you remember anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit was funny. I liked that a lot, too. I liked it because it also showed that, like, yo, yo, there's a lot of chokes in Battle Rap, too. Like, this is a real aspect. Like, they just showed a lot of real, realistic things. It's like, oh, I can relate to that. You know? I, I like the camaraderie that they showed because, um, you know, um, they showed the Battle Rappers hanging out together and stuff like that after they battled. Mm-hmm. And stuff, you know, and that's how um, the main character and... um. Dumbfounded got cool. It's been like so long since I seen this dog on the movie, so I can't think of anybody's names in the movie and stuff like that. And we just have Summer Madness eight, so yeah, forgive me. Yeah, but yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of bars and, and a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of battle rap over the last couple months, so it's definitely a lot to keep up with. But uh, it's just it was amazing, man. And um, when Adam got his his battle, Adam had some fire ass punches, low key. Like when he he told the guy he was like, uh, your girl is a t- your girl is a twat. Uh, Metal Gear, Solid Snake, uh, put my snake in uh, Metal Gear, put my Solid Snake in a box. Snake in a box. Yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> you got bars, bars. This, yeah, I know, I, there was, I know there was probably some people watching it that are battlers, and they're like, fuck, why didn't I write that shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's too late now. You can't steal from a movie. Yeah, nah. Oh my god, somebody's gonna do it one day, and it's gonna go viral. <laughs> well, you're gonna get. They better get thrown out the culture for that. They don't watch that cartoon. (laughs) That's the worst hype man in history, dog. I can't believe that shit. When Divine Nine and um, Dumbfounder was having a conversation about, like, you know, their their uh their personality and them battling. They're like, yo, I'm always gonna get the female bars about you know being a bitch, and you're always gonna get the Asian bars about people joking. And I, I liked it a lot because they they said one thing that really stood out to me. Well, the the best part about you and me knowing what people are gonna say is that we can respond to it. And I'm like, yo, counterwriting is a real thing in battle rap. It's just like we LTBR, we love counterwriting. Like we're just battle rap degenerates. People don't really, like appreciate it as much as they should. 
I agree, man. Uh, Counterwriting is definitely like crucial in battle rap and, you know, trying to deflect anything that somebody can say against you, you know? So when um, Divine Nine and um, what you gonna call it, Dump found this character, you know, had their battle, the way they did it, I'm not gonna sit here and give it away, but the way they did it, like it was like real, real dope on, you know, how they did a great job of doing exactly that. They took what they said in their conversation and put it in the into rhyme form, you know? And what this movie did um, accomplish was, you know, show the beauty of what battle rap really is. And that conversation being transformed into rhyme form in that battle showed the beauty of battle rap. Yeah, and counterwriting can also go, you know, one of two ways, either really good or really bad. Most of the time, there's not really like an in-between. Um, and that whole battle was was awesome. I think they both had fire bars throughout the whole thing. And they didn't, that was one way of two showing like when you battle a homie, like you don't really want to get personal and say some shit that you regret or whatever. So they, they took the, you know, the different route and didn't even rap about each other, but instead went against those stereotypes that they always face, but actually had fire bars. So the next time someone comes with, you know, some stupid shit against them, they better be fired with it because I already said that. Yeah, man. I think about, I think about a lot of people that I've interviewed on the show, right? That have stigmas that they have no choice but to just deal with, right? Like, um, for example, Flat King Eye, right? He's the first, he's the first uh, openly gay battle rapper. And he's told me, he's like, yo, it's just like, it's weird because people will come with me about who I am and I already, I already know this. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. At least try to make me feel bad about it. Like, you know, at least be, come be creative about it. And Divine Nine and Dumbfounded just like highlighted, like, yo, it's important to be creative. Like, you you can say all these stereotypes that I can't get rid of being black. I can't get rid of being Asian. I can't get rid of being whatever you're going to talk about. But, you know, bring it into the art form in a way that's it's entertaining, it's original, it's creative. And I, I thought that them battling each other but coming at each other's own stigmas was pretty deep because it's like, shit, like, if somebody really did this in real, in like a real battle, then you can't, you can never come at them ever again for it. They kind of B-rabbited the situation. Yeah, man. Um, what, what, a little more open form, what, what were some of your guys' favorite scenes? Like, what was one of your favorite scenes of the movie? Uh, Lux and Hollow 2 on 2. Yo, that shit was fire. I, I thought the, uh, oh, my bad. I'm sorry, bro. I, um, I love when they let, like, Lux get loose and he had, like, eight bars straight. And at the end of it, he was like, you're going to get this work. Because I know, I know Lux probably like, yo, let me flex a little bit. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was cool to see him throw that in there. And yeah. Hollow had on, a, you know, some LOM clothing in the battle. Um, So they definitely had their plugs in there for sure. Facts. Then uh, the house party scene. Yeah, I was about to say that that was one of my, my scenes too when they went to the, the house part, to Disaster's party. Yeah. Uh, Disaster time. Had- Disaster was pretty good in this movie as far as like rapping and stuff like that and being disaster. He was like A1 disaster. <laughs> he was like no different than them. So Yeah, and then expect you know, that scene too, that was kinda that was kinda weird. And then like when he they let him go after all the all the shit that happened and then Adam kinda went off, like, Are you fucking kidding me? All the shit you talk and then you just gonna let us go? Like, and like he said, no, we're up. gonna he was like, No, we're gonna battle. Yeah, and it was like, at least he didn't, you know. Again, it, showing it the beauty went. of battle yeah, rap. Yeah, exactly. You, know I mean? you could take it out, you could take it out on, the, on the stage. You could settle it there. You don't have to always resort to, to violence, which was interesting. But it's also like, yo, Adam, shut the fuck up before he really does whack your ass. <laughs> right. Yeah, man, I, I agree. I agree. Um, what, was, what was one of my favorite scenes? Um I love the the Megaton's first battle. I guess uh, MC Goggles. Obviously, that was in the trailer, so we got to, <laughs> we got to experience it way before the movie. But like, it's just like watching it in the theater. Like it was pure silence. Uh, I was surrounded by battle rap fans, so they're kind of like, mm, mm, you know, like they they're grunting and they're they're clapping at certain bars, and it, it's just like this is this is disaster, you know. It, and it was deep. Um, uh, one funny scene that I really liked it, w- it wasn't too funny but it just like made me chuckle 
um, the Latin battle rapper that was with him the entire time, Che. Yeah. Um, he reminded me a little bit of Cortez because, like, one of his battles, he said a bar. I got slept on, and he's like, "Yo, y'all sleeping? Y'all sleeping?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, ah." Oh, and then he like, like ran it back. He's like, "Y'all don't get it." And you know what's funny? He's like, "He's like, you sleeping?" And then somebody was like, "You put him to sleep." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I don't know. I've seen that guy in in some other movie before. But I'm not exactly sure like what movie it was, or like on some show. But they did a good job casting his character too. Yeah, facts, man, facts. I think it was uh, I think it was Charlemagne the guy, aka Honey Grams, that was like. How did you feel about Charlemagne's character? How did you feel Charlemagne did? You know. Um, I don't know. Like I wasn't like blown away by it. Like he was a host. Like what 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 am I really gonna expect the host to do? But I mean, but, as far as like you know. A organic, a smack, an ARP, you know, like as far as being one of those guys, you know, that host the battle or whatnot. Like, how did you feel he did? I thought, I thought he could have did a better job uh, of like being one of the hosts that we know because, like, they put Smack and Be, um, not Smack and Beasley, uh, Smack and Norbs, like, real briefly towards the end. And I was really happy to see Norbs, you know, shouts to Norbs. And Norbs literally had two lines in the entire movie. He said, You heard, and he walked off. I'm like, Come on, man. <laughs> I want to hear Norbs talking shit. <laughs> imagine yeah, Norbs. They didn't give him a chance. Imagine Norbs talking his shit on a movie. Oh man. Oh man. Organic had more lines than Smack and Norbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In one little scene. You know what I mean? Oh, it was kind I, of back to back too. I love the the appearance of Il Mac and Thesaurus. That was great. Yeah, definitely. You know, because they're legends in the battle rap game. It's like, how could you do this movie and have all these battle rappers in it without them? Was there any battle like, rappers? They're standing on the side commentating and stuff. Was there any battle rappers you felt like was missing from the movie? Like, damn, I wish this person was here. Uh, I would love to see Twerk in that movie. Pause. But I would have loved to see New Jersey Twerk, like, have a small role in that movie. I mean, just anybody I would throw in the movie, I know, like, Physically, it wasn't possible. Twerk was still in his come up at the time they were shooting the movie, but it had been dope to see, like, you know, him and Disaster's character together, like, in the same form, like, um, Hollow and Lux character. What about you, Dylan? Anybody you felt like was like I mean, I would have liked to see a female battler. Um, I feel like they could have. I mean, I feel like the 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 co-star, the, the female battler, the... Divine Ryan. Divine, yeah, she was. Uh, she did really well. Um, she gave me a, a real good battle rap feel. The way that she rapped and everything was actually her aggression uh, was actually really cool. I thought she she adapted well, but I still thought that they could have represented that that side of battle rap a little better with even just like a slight you know appearance or something. Uh, you know what? I felt but, was, you know what I felt was left out low key. I felt like it should have been another female battler in there. Yeah, I agree with that too. Like two female battlers at least, instead of just one around a bunch of guys. You feel me? I, I missed the uh, Hitman and Aver in this movie. I'm like, damn. They... Clips too. Yeah, any of those three guys could have definitely made a great impact. You said Clips, Aver, and who else? Um, Hit- Hitman. Oh yeah, and Hitman. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I would. I think Hitman was missing. I'm glad they got Iron three. Solomon in it. Like Iron Solomon's scene in the beginning, really early on, was fucking hilarious. Hell yeah! So sick. It was good to see everybody. Every time I saw a new battle rapper, I was like, uh, I watched it with my girl. I like nudged her. I was like, Hey, that's so and so. Hey, that's so and so. Yeah. I gave her a little rundown of everybody beforehand. Man, that, that was probably the hardest part. Trying to talk throughout the whole movie, like, oh shit, that's what's his name. Uh, converting the casuals. Yeah, facts. What did uh what do you guys think of Ben and uh Adam's battle? So we're getting we're getting close towards the end of the movie. So we get, we we're in the timeline of the review in a sense. What do you guys think of Ben and Adam's battle? That shit was really crazy. Yeah, it was intense, man. I mean it just shows how you know, sometimes there's lines that you know can can be crossed. Um 
And I think, you know, Ben summed it up well at the end when he said, you know, I respect your craft, but we're not friends. And, uh, you know, that's the lines that are drawn. If you're going to go that far and take that route, I mean, you're going to, you know, you're not going to be able to hold a, you know, a friendship with somebody like that. But, you know, like, you know, he's like you said, I respect your craft. He still can be witty about it, but there's a disrespect line that, you know, that can be crossed. Right. And, um, also, you saw, like, you know, Adam cross the line in his first round, but in Ben's second round, Ben crossed the line. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So it was like, damn, like, if Adam didn't cross the line in the first round, Ben was going to cross the line in the second round anyway. But that also taps into the maybe he heard it and then tapped into that other bag of, all right, disrespectful. He talked about my daughter jokes. Right, of course. So it's premeditated, you know, in a sense, like yeah, right, yeah. just in case he goes there. So yeah, goods can never go battle there. Adam. That's what we're saying here, right? Goods can never battle Adam. No, 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 <laughs> no. Nah, good, goods. Uh, they would never book that. <laughs> Yo, it was crazy because, like, I was thinking to myself for a minute, like, what if in the battle rap community, for real, like, not to get too deep into the trenches of it. There's battlers that like have really close relations, right? Like they they have a good bond, they fucks with each other, and they get the call for the battle, and somebody says, you know what? I'm gonna just pull a fast one and get personal, and it's like, oh, you my you my boy, like you was you weren't supposed to know half the things you threw out there, and you threw it out there. So then it's like when people want to get personal in battle rap, like for real, like is there a conversation that's had prior? Is there a filter? Is there just like a no limits? Like what, what's what's going on with that? You know, like I guess that's part of the negotiation process too. So we'll never really fully know. Mm, kind of hit man. Uh, Surf and Suge. Mm-hmm. You know, like with kind of hit man, there probably was a conversation with Surf and Suge. There probably wasn't one. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I agree, but I feel like you know, with certain certain aspects like it depends with this on how one, the relationship is yeah i agree because you know i think when you see like a rider glue easy they're on the same team they didn't really get personal a lot of people like you know chef trez and jc both riders block whatever used to be whatever didn't get too personal mm, good examples yeah Absolutely. um so there's a way to be fire without getting personal but with surf and shug there was a lot of animosity there was a lot of tension and I think both of them expected the other one to be disrespectful, especially because of, you know, just who they are as battle rappers as well. And, uh, yeah, they, they uh, you know, that's it. The whole situation is different. I think it all just, it varies. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, another part of the, that, that battle, I think it was the second round or, or like it's the, whatever, towards the end of the battle when it was back on Adam again, second round. And, like, you see, like, two folders pop up in his mind. Like, this is, like, his mental uh, thought process. One folder says personal. <laughs> the other one says way too personal. <laughs> so it's like he, he prepared for, like, different rounds to adapt to whatever was going to happen that night, which mm-hmm. which lets me know, which could probably explain why battlers never stick to time limits because they're over-preparing <laughs> and have so many different rounds that they want to throw out there. And they're like, fuck it, I, I can never use this shit again. Let me get it out the way. And nobody's going to stop them. Right. I think we figured out why battles, time limits have discrepancies. We figured it out. We figured out why Briz is always arguing about the time. Put this in the, you know, put this in your movie. <laughs> yeah. Put Briz in the next movie. Have him arguing over his time. I wouldn't mind seeing Briz and T-Top in the next movie. I definitely nah, they, that'd be dope. You know what? Um, I had a conversation with um someone I remain who shall remain uh, uh, someone who shall remain nameless. You know about um this movie more so um moving forward. Um, I feel like this should be like a continuance of this movie in some sort of way. I would like to see it more so like play out um as like a series on a streaming device. That'd be dope. Um, but in terms of like a continuance of this movie. You got the suburban side of, you know, the white guy coming in the battle rap. Now you got to study somebody such as Chess and tell it from the urban side. Hmm. 
like the struggles of a battle rapper, you know, from the urban side of, um, you know, battle rap. Because, I mean, I think through this side, you know, what they showed in this movie that gave, you know, maybe it gave some insight to, you know, people who aren't familiar with battle rap whatsoever, you know, as 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 in the, you know, how to get familiar with battle rap or whatnot and how this guy, you know, got familiar with battle rap and exactly what battle rap is, you know, from his side of the world. So now you got to tell it from the other side of the world. If that and makes I, think, any sense. I think it would be easy to transition into a, another main character that is more in tune to the culture and then kind of flip it into that. So, no, I agree with you. I think that would be actually really cool. And they can make a good story out of it, a good, you know, storyline for a good movie that would just do well in general too, but also give a good insight into battle rap. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it would be too hard for them to do that if they wanted to, just if y'all are listening. Right. I mean, um, right. You know use what? the same battle rapper. I would still want to see the same battle rappers in it, you know, from um, this one, but I would also like to see because it's being told from another side, um, you know, like more battle rappers, like newer battle rappers per se, like get a chance in this movie and the older battle rappers who are in the first one more so have more roles within this movie if that makes any sense so like, you, it'd be you like mentors up, or you whatnot. the suggestion of like seeing this become a series right like a streaming thing now let me put let me let me throw this idea to you and let me hear what you guys both think about this what if i guess you made not a reality show but you made a drama of battle rap where you made storylines and obviously it'd all be scripted. The the battles wouldn't be real, but you create the storyline so people can fall in love with the personality. They still fall in love with the bars and they have something to follow while they watch the battle. And then I guess also when you create these kind of battles, they don't really come out air quote debatable. It, a winner comes out of it. So like you're creating a storyline for everything for you to follow. Is that, some, is that something that the, the battle rap culture would like? I feel like they wouldn't gravitate towards that because it's already pre, pre, uh, predetermined. I don't know. I mean, in order to do it, it, it would take a lot for them to do it, you know, more so like to do a series, I'll say, because they would really, really have to follow battle rappers around and study, like, you know, how they move through their day-to-day, so to speak and how they stay involved in the culture when they're not battling such as going to like smaller events where you know there might not be big name battlers on that card or whatnot and how they stay in touch with certain battle rappers and stuff like that and how i don't know it just would take more to to actually do that you know because it would take going into um a battler's day to day on an every day like a few battlers but Making a movie would be easy. Yeah, I think a series wouldn't work out, but <clears throat> Total Slaughter, like they had something with that, you know, like that is it, it, there was something there with it, like the, the formula was there. Maybe it was just executed wrong. And I always said this when Total Slaughter was happening twenty fourteen. If they made a Total Slaughter for just for female battle rap, oh my god, that's it. Everybody would love it. Yeah, hell everybody, yeah. Everybody would fucking love it because Vlad Vlad TV alone had female battle rap lit. What? <laughs> Man, I just watched Star Girl and um QB <laughs> arguing last week. Just just to get the, the thrills of it again. I it just you. popped up in my notifications. I said, Oh, I'm watching this. <laughs> I remember this. Right. Um last two things of, of the movie I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um at the end, right, when Adam lost his tooth. And then you know, uh, the the ending scene of the movie, he like he's like, oh, I finally got a rap name. My rap name's gonna be, and you know, he he showed toothless, and the shit hits black, and the movie ends. What what was the first thought you guys had in your in yourself when you saw this guy toothless, and he's talking about who he's gonna become? I'm in front of DNA. Wow, no fucking way. I'm about to tie him to a leash in case he tries to fucking run away. It's the first thing that popped in my head yo, I when still, I saw that's the, that's the first thing that came to my mind, too. I was like, yo, this is DNA. <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this whole movie based on... The, uh, nah, it's not based on DNA. But I was just like, yo, th- th- they pay some homage here. Because DNA was also definitely missing in this movie, too. He's never around for a lot of the... the the theatric they thing called them. Rap. Yeah, yeah. In, um, fifteen minutes of fame. Um, clip. They actually showed DNA and um, Joseph Kahn at the New York premiere, and DNA was like talking to Joseph Kahn. He was like, "Yeah, your people did reach out to me. Like, they did hit me because Joseph was like, I was trying to get you in. He's like, Yeah, 
they did reach out to me and they hit me. It was just like the schedule that I had something with BET and then I had like a battle. Just the, the way their schedule was. So they did try to get DNA in this movie. No, okay, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. But man, Clips would have been hilarious in this movie. Damn. Um, there was one more thing that really hit me too in the movie. Oh, this remember. This, I remember now. When Adam was kind of homeless, I guess his family turned on him. He had nowhere to go. He's sleeping on the bench. His girl kicked him out. His girl kicked him out, right? Isn't it crazy how sometimes, and like, I guess it's my, not to be pessimistic, but battle rap is a very thankless culture where, like, you know, these MCs are just like, they're, they're literally putting not, not their lives on the line, but like their mental health on the line, their emotions, their, their, their craft, their writing abilities. I mean, they're exposing themselves. They're exposing yeah. themselves. They, they, they prepare for months just for like the outcome of a 30 minute battle to change the way they're going to live for the next. You know, X amount of months or years. Or the way people view them for the next months and years, you and know. And how moving fast forward. They, so they literally history. are putting their lives on the line. You know what I mean? Yeah, they I mean, really the, biggest, the biggest thing I thought of when, when everything went viral with him saying all that, that racist stuff and she played it on the TV at school, I thought about Tay Rock with Ariana Grande shit. Do y'all remember when that went yeah, went down yeah, and he yeah. had... He had their fan base going after him for the Manchester. Yeah, blow her spot up. Yeah. Yeah, I had a Manchester to spot yeah. blow up, but like that was what that reminded me of, and that's kind of a reality that that we face in this community is just sometimes they don't like what you have to say. Sometimes like, they, it's like too. Bars. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes the, the casual person takes that disrespect, and they're like, "No, nah, I don't give a fuck what it's about battle rap or nothing." That's too far and that's kind of something that you know we got to I mean, deal with but that's just joseph kind of said um he set out to make a movie about uh what the world is like today and um he didn't know it was even going to be a battle rap movie and you know and then he got in touch with kid twist and he was just like this is it this is everything like you can go to work and get fired for saying to somebody you know, like this is American society, you know, and pretty much you feel like a good representation of what American society is, is battle rap, you know, in a way. I forgot exactly how he worded it, but more so, he wanted this movie more so to represent like where the world is today. You know, and he set out to shoot a movie, you know, that described that and didn't know it was going to be a battle rap. And I think he did a good job of that. Yeah, he definitely yeah. executed it very well. Like, it just, it was relatable. Like, it made sense. And, and you know, Ben having a, a video game designing job, a daughter that's sick, he needs the extra $5,000 for a performance whenever he can get it with his talents. That's real, man. That's why some of these battle rappers, like, you know, you, we're lucky to have the, the small few, the 10, 15 people that can handcraft their career, get good paydays, have less than 25 battles. And, you know, we love them every single time we see them, but not everybody's that fortunate. Somebody has to go out and do 30, 40, 50, 60 battles just to keep, you know, uh, the lights on or their, their phone on or, you know, their kids fed. And it's like, we forget how real this shit is sometimes. And I, I loved it because it reminded us that. And Ben, you know, he called Adam like, yo, I thought about quitting this this stuff hundreds of times. And I feel like that's a part of battle rap that I would love to hear from some MCs. I might ask them in the near future, like, were there any moments you wanted to quit and what did you convince yourself to, to, to not do so? Because I'm sure, like, before a lot of the guys were getting paid... They, they thought to themselves, why am I going to keep doing Look, imagine now, right, with how hard it is and you, people are making thousands of dollars per performance. Imagine when you weren't getting paid. The resilience you needed is crazy. People yeah. come, people traveling out their own pockets, uh, you know what I'm saying, performing for somebody to record it and you don't even have access to it or you don't even know if the footage is ever going to come out. Like, a verb came to New York to, to battle ice and ends up battling SB in the streets of the Bronx. And that one moment changed not just his life, but everybody for a whole region. The world of battle rap. It changed, you know what I mean? So much for battle rap, you know, with that one clip and verb and them might not even been sure that clip was coming out. Facts. Could you imagine that had been vaulted? 
No guardian angel. Yo, imagine life with no guardian angel. Oh yeah. man! And so battle rap with no guardian angel, it ain't the same. <laughs> what if Miles versus Lux got vaulted? Oh, that's a great question. Now, like, what if this got vaulted? What would he, what would we be at? We could do a we could do a whole episode on that. That's a that's a great little. What would happen to the culture? How what battles are? You know, we could, is, that's a good way of finding out which ones are actually like super important. Yeah, that's actually that's a really great topic. Um, Bad Money, I think I know what you were talking about. The thing Joseph Kahn said. I'll re- I'll read this off and we can we can uh, close up the review. He 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 has here he quotes. Um, air quote Joseph Kahn. The most surprising thing was how overwhelmingly people loved the movie. I felt it was such a controversial movie because of the race jokes, the sexist jokes, the homophobe jokes, all the context that goes within it. But there seems to be an understanding amongst humans that co- of the context. And it's missing It's missing a national dialogue. The context is everything. I made this movie 100% offensive for a reason. Criticism is funny to me. Essentially, when I thought 90% of this was going to be jokes... 10% of this movie was aimed at me. Therefore, uh, I hate this movie. It's weird when people dislike the movie for that reason. And if you think about it, you're just not accepting of the 90% of the jokes that you are not about. It's called hypocrisy. And it's a fact. It's a 100% fact. Like, if you can't criticize a battle rap, but then, like, be a fan of so many other vogue cultures. How'd you find that that fast? Uh, <laughs> Facts. I, I, just, I, I, I pull up the file, man. I pull up the file. No, nah, I think that was perfectly said. Uh, I think that's exactly, uh, you know, hey, one of the, the definition of hypocrisy is you know just taking that and that ten percent and just neglecting the whole message and what was actually supposed to be coming across. Right, because it's like, how are you offended by this ten percent? But what about the other ninety percent? Or racist shit or horrible shit that was said about these other people. Why are you not offended by that? Why are you not just offended by all of it? You know, so it's just more so like embrace. Or why can't you just understand it all and put it all into perspective and see what was actually trying to come across? I mean, it's if the picture is being painted for you and you're refusing to look at it, that's you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Facts. Yeah, the the thick skin that a battle rapper needs or anything just to be a part of this culture to begin with is just it's incredible, man. And honestly, like we all have already had this appreciation for our MCs that we cover, we talk about, but I just found a whole new found appreciation. Like it was just I left the movie like well represented and humbled, honestly. Definitely. Agreed. Yeah, the last quote by Joseph Kahn. It's a celebration of humanity and teaching humanity's lessons. The people who program them the people who program themselves to think that they're philosophers, they will enrich people's perspectives by choosing the right material and change the world throughout their incredible taste in the cinema. Really well said, man. I would love to hear more from Joseph Kahn about this movie too, man. I know he's talked about it tons of times, but it's just brilliant mind to to paint this picture perfectly the way it is and Nothing was held back. Like there was nothing. There was no punches held back for it. You know, like no, no, nothing censored. Yeah, I felt. You know, I felt great as a battle rap fan. I thought that, uh, you know, it was a good representation of the culture in general, and a uh, good job by everybody involved. And I feel like the battle rappers just went natural, man. It didn't seem like they were acting. Like mm-hmm. now, you go watch a movie. And tell somebody's like new to acting or they're just like remembering their lines, they're not seeming like a natural actor. The battle rappers seem like they were being themselves and naturally acting as well. You know what I mean? So it was Facts. definitely a good look for a lot of these guys. And I definitely want to see a lot of these guys get back into um acting as well. Facts. Pretty much everybody. Everybody did good. I want to see everybody else like on the big screen. Dumbfounded is a star. Yeah, he was on. He was on culture, power. The culture wins, man. The culture fucking wins. Anybody that was hating on this movie prior to, man, I'm never get offensive, but kick rocks, like <laughs> <laughs> facts. Get out of here. Get facts. Get get take that out of here because this yeah. this is incredible. Oh man, uh, our first movie review, guys. Uh, hopefully. You know, Tim gets to see the movie when he takes a, a drive to another state. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Yeah, no, hopefully ho- hopefully he can cop the the YouTube one, you know. I think the YouTube one will be out soon. And you know what? Just it's, like- it's November 26th, I believe. Oh, off, look, off look at, rip. Look yeah, at I got YouTube red, so um, you know. Yo, course, what if what if what end, if end of November for sure? What if the fans of this movie is just like the real battle rap community? Like they don't cop the vod or the pay per view, but they wait for the battle to the drop. The bootleg. <laughs> They're battle. No, I, I mean, you. YouTube I Red is you. a paid service. They're not going to be able to watch this movie unless they got YouTube Red. Like a lot of battle rap fans don't know how it feels to experience watching a battle with no commercials. It's a wonderful feeling, you know what I mean? So. Don't think y'all just gonna sit around and be like, yeah, I'm gonna catch you on feels. YouTube Red. That'd be <laughs> wonderful feeling, Dylan. But YouTube Red, I get two other free apps. I'm gonna put you on. Okay. Talk, talk that shit. Talk that red tube shit. <laughs> Wait, no, red, I red tube. YouTube oh, red. Oh, my <laughs> friends. Oh, whoa. I'm gonna wrap it up. You better not edit this. You better not edit this. Time to wrap it up. This has been Let's Talk Battle Rap. My phone's on 2%. Y'all have a good night, man. <laughs> this was bodied. <laughs> I, I gotta leave it in there now, right? I can't. Oh, you man. have to. You uh, have oh man. To. <laughs> uh, follow us at LTBR Podcast on Twitter. Follow us at Bad Money Two Nine and King Snowflake on Twitter. Is there an underscore between King and Snowflake? No, nah, underscores at the end. At King Snowflake underscore. All right. We are Let's Talk Better Rap Podcast. Shout out to Tim. Shout out to Program V. This has been your body movie review. We are out of here. Peace.